Hey gang, welcome back to the big board and next war, India, Pakistan. We have officially wrapped up a turn and uh, I've got to say I'm uh, enjoying it uh, a lot. And it struck me that this is probably a general observation, not necessarily something that pertains directly to next war, but I've been putting off playing this game for quite a while because a lot of commentary online talked through the inherent comp complexity of the game and uh, that, you know, there's a lot of die rolling and a lot of uh, time taken to play. You know, it's a time uh, heavy game. And I, I would probably say that that's a little bit of an unfair characterization. I, I don't think the air was as bad as everyone makes it out to be, it, particularly for this module. Now, it may be that if you're playing the full Korean War, which is two maps, so arguably, you know, well, definitely twice the size for sure, but uh, I don't know what the the air war counter count is. In fact, I probably should try and find the game. It's somewhere over there on that pile. Uh, and, and have a look at it. I could see how it could become a bit of a drag, and that's why they came out with this uh, condensed or summarized version of the advanced air war rules. But the air war gives you a lot of flavor, so it's well worth the effort uh, to put into the game, and maybe the condensed version is a nice compromise there. But look, I'm into thinking about some of the other games that I've been looking at recently. Uh, the Second World War, the Balkan Front system, I think it's called. Uh, Balk Balkan Front is the title, and the Second World War is the system. And it's basically... Europa revisited with more detail and some more granularity. And then there's another game, the GOSS system, whatever that stands for, again, the Grand Operational something or other system that uh, has been you know, roundly shat on by various folks because of the inherent uh, A, complexity of the rules, and B, just uh, either disorganization or poorly worded stuff. So I've seen lots and lots of frustration online with that. So this, you know, this experience here with Next War is starting to give me pause to, uh, you know, ignore the commentary <clears throat> from the, the general populace because uh, everyone, everyone likes different things, right? And you just got to find, you got to try these games before you can really put your hand up and say, okay, it is a bad game. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's very easy to be a lemming in this little hobby find someone you like or someone you know or someone you think you know and you uh, you know buy into whatever they're saying without actually playing the game and uh, and I must admit I've been guilty of that too and to a certain extent uh, I'm fairly circumspect about people's opinions I, I like to I like to try games for myself before I'll jump on the bandwagon about something being good bad or indifferent uh, I think Perhaps we, we do sort of jump to conclusions, perhaps when we haven't played as much as we claim we have, whatever the case might be. So, But there is one thing that I have noticed with games that have been coming out recently and perhaps systems that have been around for a little while. I don't know. It just Maybe it's just my where I am in my maturity, maturity profile as a gamer. Uh, the... There seems to be a tendency for these grand operational scale games, which, uh, you know, this is possibly one of those. Uh, I'm thinking more of the OCS style stuff and BCS and uh, who else would fit in there? Well, you know, the, the Second World War would fit in there and GOSS would fit in there and Pacific War would fit in there, even though that's a very old game. Uh, there's, there's uh, oh, GTS would, that's gr it's called Grand Tactical, I guess, but... Uh, Nevertheless, those types of games, I've kind of labeled a few games there, those types of games seem to be evolving to become more complex than less complex. So very, very granular detail on things that perhaps you may not necessarily want to be granular on. Whereas the flip side of the tactical level games seem to be refining their gameplay and simplifying their gameplay without losing flavor, theme, and narrative. And I look at Combat Commander, 
I look at uh, you know Lock and Load. I look at Band of Brothers as a great example of that. Uh, there's a couple other games that have come out recently as well that whose names escape me at the moment that I think uh, when you compare them to some of the you know industry standard tactical games really have refined the gameplay so that you can consume a game, enjoy it, get the history lesson out of it if there is one to be had, get the fun out of it if it's there to be had, and, and really enjoy the game. Whereas a lot of these uh, monster-sized or larger-scaled games seem to be an, uh, more and more an exercise in exploring how much pain you can sustain before you go, the hell with it, I, I give up. Um, part of me looks at, at the Grand Tactical System as uh, a nice compromise to that, but I don't know that it's an ideal system yet. I need to play it some more before I kind of give it a massive thumbs up. Certainly like it, but uh, it has the tendency to be a little bit repetitive in, in terms of the actions that you're executing on. Uh, and that may just be the people I'm playing against. So we'll see. Uh, so there's that. I can't talk to Goss or to the Second World War yet. I haven't played him. The, the, the thickness, number of word, the word count, the somewhat messy rule writing really kind of puts me off. I think I've been a little bit spoiled by OCS's crisp clarity. And uh, despite its logistical issues, uh, you know, a lot of people just don't like to sh shuttle trucks around and, and move uh, cans of beans. So there's a, I think there's some trade-off somewhere. And maybe we'll go through a cycle at some point where these operational systems will start to be uh, refined a little more. Uh, we'll, we'll do some of the things perhaps that even in this game, there's some very nice aspects to the game that are abstracted out. These air defense tracks and AAA tracks and charts to help you run through things pretty efficiently that rather than having 100 anti-aircraft uh, units on the board and uh, mobile SAM sites and stuff like that, we're using a track and you can degrade that track and you can you can fight the track, so to speak. Similar to what uh, GTS does with the with the naval landings, just a little bit more nuance to it, uh, perhaps. So anyway, that's a little bit of food for thought there. I guess this was gonna be a discussion about the end of the turn, turn into something else. So maybe I'll do the end of turn bit later, or we'll just move on to turn two and kind of, kind of take it from there. All right, talk to you guys soon. Love to hear what you guys think, actually. You know, what do you guys think? Uh, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about the idea that operational games or grand operational games have become too, uh, too minutia-driven and too minutia-laden? Uh, have uh, tactical games become too abstract? Who knows? Talk to you soon.